we're going to start off with prayer. If one of my fellow council persons would love to lead it, I sure would appreciate it. We have Councilman Copeland. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the, another opportunity to come together as a council and as a community uh, to vote for the betterment and discuss the betterment of our great city. Father, we ask that you give us wisdom, insight, and strength as we go throughout this agenda, as we hear from our community, that we will hear their heart and that we will work together as one, as a greater city. We thank you for opportunities and income um, and greatness for the success of the city of Saginaw. We ask that you grace and give strength to our council members, as well as our city staff, our city employees, as we work to make this city greater as well as our citizens. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good evening, everyone. This is a public meeting, and the audience is asked to refrain from any loud interruptions or otherwise disrupt distorting noise. I'd like to do a friendly reminder, especially to my council persons. Can we put those phones on vibrate? Audience, if you could do it as well, I truly would appreciate it. I still need a new phone. Now I want to get your phone. Madam Clerk, roll call. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Lamar Sylvia. Present. Councilmember Williams. Present. Councilmember Bench. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Present. Councilmember Scherzer. Present. Councilmember Ostash is excused. Councilmember Flores. Present. Councilmember Copeland. Present. Mayor Moore. Present. We have eight members present, one excused. Do we have any announcements? Yes, Mayor, I do have a couple. I want to remind everyone that July 26th at 4 o'clock p.m., it is the deadline to file for City Council and for Saginaw School Board positions. City Council will have four four-year terms, and the Saginaw School Board will have two six-year terms on the November 8th ballot. Petitions and the Affidavit of Identity forms are available in the City Clerk's Office. Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock p.m. Mayor, our next order of business would be public hearings. Okay. So. You want to read the rules for the public hearing? Oh. My fault. Thank you. Public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is that the public can address council as a whole and for council to hear the information provided by the speaker for considerations regarding specific actions being requested. The speaker is limited to those remarks only pertaining to the public hearing. Please begin by stating your name, your position, um, if you are if you support it or if you are or if you are opposed of it. The representative will be allowed 10 minutes. Every speaker thereafter will have 10 minutes. A public ask the public hearing is not a question and answer period. Therefore, questions must not be directed to individual council members, city staff, or audience. Madam Clerk. Thank you. Just to clarify, Mayor, that the main speaker will have 10 minutes. Others will have three. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. And our public hearing tonight is regarding the request of the obsolete property rehabilitation certificate at 101 North Washington Avenue and 111 East Genesee Avenue. Do we have anyone here? to speak on this matter. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Marilyn Crowley. I work for Michigan Community Capital, the developer of the uh, proposed project. Thank you for having me. Um, I wanted to just uh, speak for a few minutes about who we are as an organization and about the project. Um, so Michigan Community Capital is a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, we were originally founded in 2004 as a public-private partnership um, between uh, MISHTA, MEDC, and the Great Lakes Cap Fund um, to attract new market tax credits to the state of Michigan. In 2018, we expanded um, to start uh, offering loans to low-income census tracts, so we're a community development finance institution, um, and we also started doing our own development projects uh, 
basically in markets that it didn't make any financial sense to do real estate projects. Um, and so we still do those. We still apply for new market tax credits. We still are a community development finance institution. Um, we actually have an insurance company that we do loans to uh, affordable housing, and then we do real estate development. Um, did y'all get the packet I provided? Okay. Just you. <laughs> no, there's a PDF. Okay. okay. Um, so I, I won't read through all the projects that I provided uh, as experience, but as I mentioned, we've been doing projects since 2018. Um, some of our projects include uh, apartment complex in Cadillac, which was the first project done in 30 years um, in that community. Uh, we just completed Broadway Lofts, which is a mixed-use uh, multifamily apartment building in uh, Mount Pleasant that also includes a first-floor co-op grocery store as our primary tenant. Um, and then we're in the process of completing a historic redevelopment in Ludington using uh, federal historic tax credits um, and an adaptive reuse project in Lansing. Um, so beyond that, um, our experience as a team is far longer than 2018. Um, so I've been in the field of uh, community economic development for 10 years. Um, and we have uh, bankers and uh, compliance folks that have been in their well into their career over 20 years. So um, we feel confident we're able to, we're the team able to put this project together. Um, I guess taking a step back, we're talking about the redevelopment of the um, second national building. Um, so we've gone pretty far through due, due diligence. Um, so we've um, developed uh, design documents, we've studied the uh, environmental impacts, we've studied the historic um, condition of the building, and um, so now we're putting our financing package together. Um, I'm not sure how much has been shared with you to date about the project, but we're proposing to um, redevelop the building into mixed use. Hello? Oh, sorry, I cut out for a second. Um, 119 uh, mixed income apartments and um, Huntington as the anchor commercial tenant and an event space. The building will also have amenities such as a uh, fitness room, indoor bike parking, and what we're calling a grab and go fresh market. Um, kind of like the concept in a, in a airport where you can just get food quickly, but it would be stocked with um, healthy food options. Uh, when I say uh, mixed income apartments, we're not talking about income restriction or low income housing tax credits. We're talking about different size apartments that can serve a different range of incomes. Um, so we're basically targeting a range of income from 27,000 um, up to 60,000 plus. So we're, we're definitely looking to target that um, entry level job, um, all the way up through, you know, working professional here in the city. So the project is uh, currently $49.5 million, and we anticipate the appraised value at the end of construction will only be $18 million. Um, so we've identified $23 million of funding sources to date, and uh, we've submitted $20.5 million of grant applications, well, grant and tax credit applications. Um, Part of that 20 million, we've put in a request for city ARP funding, um, and also part of this request tonight is the Oprah um, district, and then I believe a Brownfield tax increment financing plan request will be coming to you in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are making this request for a public-private partnership um, primarily because it doesn't make financial sense to do the project. Um, so as a nonprofit, we're doing, we're approaching this project um, because it's, we believe, an important asset to the community. Um, and so we ask that the community also um, support it um, as we raise funds from the state and federal resources. Um, our timeline we're looking at right now is uh, this fall. 
uh, a lot of the funding application requests that we put in will be announced. Um, and that will put us ready to start construction in the spring um, with a two year construction timeline. So looking at June, 2025, we would be opening. And I, that's all I have to share right now. Um, should I stay for questions or is it just, no? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak to this matter? Is there anyone else to speak to this matter? Third and last time, is there anyone else to speak to this matter? I need a motion to close this public hearing. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Madam Clerk. Thanks. You. Thank you, Mayor. We are now at public input. We welcome those who have come and signed up to address the council tonight. Please speak slowly and clearly so that we don't miss what you have to say. You will be called to the podium by the city clerk. Speakers will have three minutes limit, which is timed by the clerk. So be sure that you cover the main points that you'd like to cover. Reminding you again, I'm asking everyone to be calm and to, to be courteous no booing, loud clapping, or any of that going on when a public speaker is speaking. Madam Clerk. Our first speaker tonight is Andrew Concanon. Don't see him coming forward. Let's go to Megan Coddington Heath. Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem and esteemed council members, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm here because I'm a candidate for circuit court judge here in the county of Saginaw. The seat that's open is a family law judge. I've practiced that for 12 years. I've devoted my life to that because my parents had a very nasty divorce and I've been trying to turn down the heat on divorces ever since. I said when I was 12, I wanted to be a judge. I'm not making that up as a joke or as to make my, or to make my campaign sound cuter, but I really did, you can ask my family. I said when I was 12, I'm gonna do better for families. And I'm trying to do that in my practice. That's evidenced by I won the Pro Bono Attorney of the Year Award in 2019. And there's a plaque with my name on it right outside the door of the courtroom that I'd like to preside over. I have my mediation certificate, domestic and civil, and I also have a certificate in special education. I got that because I was advocating so much for my special needs son that I thought I could help others with that as well. I think I'd be exceptionally qualified and I think my life history gives me the experience and the character to help our community. I met, I've met many of you, so you know my resume, and you can also go to my website. I've given you a handout, and for anyone else, you can go to votecoddington-heath.com. But I also wanted to say tonight, I came to you, council members, mayor and pro tem, to ask you to ask your constituents to vote. And the reason I ask you to ask them to vote is because there seems to be an ad running that says that the decision on this judge race is already in, that it's been made. And we vote and elect our circuit court judges in this county, and it doesn't have to be a vote for me but our citizens deserve a vote. And I would ask you to ask all your constituents to vote themselves and vote with their voice, not necessarily for me, but for whoever they choose, because the decision is in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker tonight is Terry Alexander. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I just want to speak on behalf of the people of the city I think you guys are doing a good job cleaning up uh, the, all the, the abandoned buildings and stuff, but I think there needs to be just a little bit more effort put at it too. There's three houses around the corner from my house that need attention very badly. There's people that are dumping in these houses. There's people that I caught in these houses and run them out of these houses. And there's another house next door to me that's loaded full of pigeons and raccoons and everything. and. I just would like to see some attention done to these houses because I'm a private investor and I'm taking my own personal money and trying to do things in the city and this is my second house that I've fixed up. So I just, I, like I said, I think you guys are doing a great job but I'd just like to see a little bit more get done faster. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mayor, we are now at remarks of council. Reminding all council members, you also have a three minute limit. Please speak, speak, please speak clearly. 
Um, and we will begin tonight by Councilperson Scherzer. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to our public speakers. Uh, it is always good to hear from you, especially when, as you can tell from tonight's speakers, very passionate about our city, uh, but on two different topics, but still topics that affect our city. So thank you for coming in. Thank you for sharing. Uh, just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, Friday Night Live starts this week, so I hope to see my fellow council members supporting at our city council table that the mayor so graciously sets up for us. Uh, we will be there to support you. At least you can count on me. Um, the Chief Citywide meeting is this Thursday at uh, the 14th at 6 p.m. at Houghton Jones. Mark your calendars and hopefully you show up. And then Light Up the City is this week as well at Covenant Harrison Campus. So that starts at 5.30. And then lastly, I just want to share my sentiments to the Michigan Community Capital for your thought and attention uh, and investment into Saginaw. Not only are you willing and taking the steps to rehab a building that has been underutilized for so long, but you're taking the time to update and improve Morley Plaza. I think that's an added bonus because it's such a staple park that is utilized for many things in the community and you're investing in it. You're adding parking. I understand it's gonna take a piece, but you didn't just stop there. You saw the need for outdoor seating, for new sidewalks, to enhance the stage area and the, the areas that is used by so many organizations you understood that there still is the need for that space to be here for the community, but also enhance what your project is. So hats off to you because some people just stop at the building. They don't even think about what's next, what's outside, what's adjoining, what's around. So that takes uh, an innovative thought process and uh, economic investment. So I appreciate it because I am an advocate and diehard uh, worker for workforce and economic development. So thank you for not only seeing the building, but seeing the surrounding and the whole vision of the city. Other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Next we have Council Man Flores. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, hello, Saginaw. Uh, happy 7-Eleven. Go get your small Slurpee for free before 11.59 today. Or <laughs> Operation Chill is going on with the Saginaw Police Department. So uh, they're handing out free Slurpees as well. I think it's pretty cool. Pun attended. Uh, so I don't have too much. Um, yeah, that's great uh, for the, the mixed housing. Um, I actually came across uh, two folks that were camping out in um, my neighborhood. Uh, they kind of set up camp they're homeless, and I gave them some information for the rescue mission. But yeah, uh, it would be great to see some affordable housing um, to be brought into Saginaw. Um, Outside of that, I really don't have too much. It was great to be here for the fourth. Uh, it was uh, an amazing kind of community moment uh, on our Independence Day, especially with so much that had been happening in the nation. So it was great to see everybody kind of out and about. And um, I love that sense of community. So that's all I have. It's great to see everybody. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Copeland. Good evening, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here this evening. I only have one thing. Thank you to our speakers this, uh, this evening. Um, thank you for sharing that message about our election. We are, as a community, you have a voice. August 2nd is our primaries. Please utilize this time to vote. Um, it's a right that we have as Americans, and we must utilize that right. It's so important right now. Um, but the one thing I do want to share is July 11th through the August 22nd. We know that our children are out of school. Summer school is going on. Um, but I also came across a City of Saginaw funded program at the Hearts for the Community um, from July 11th through August 22nd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Um, there is a summer camp going on. It's a free summer camp for our young people from ages two to 17. Um, for more information, you can call 989-401-4465. Um, there's a lot going on. This is a safe opportunity for our young people to have something to do. Um, give them something. I hope they're doing some reading programs as well. Um, but this is a great opportunity. Get our young people there. Please support 
our public school district as well as summer school is going on. Um, and as it's getting warmer, please check on your um, elderly uh, neighbors. That is a major thing that I've been paying attention to right now. Um, dehydration is big right now. Um, so please make sure you're drinking your water. Please stay safe and have a safe and great summer. That's all I have. It's good Thank to see you. Thank you. Next we have council person Sylvia. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for everyone that has uh, in attendance uh, this evening for uh, council, uh, city council meeting. I'd like to uh, also thank the speakers. Uh, most of my council persons have actually uh, said most of what I wanted to say. So <laughs> my main thing is please get out and vote. Definitely, I cannot reiterate that enough. Uh, get out and vote August 2nd. Please be registered. Get registered. Help somebody get registered. Take somebody to the poll. Pull somebody to the poll. Push them to the poll. Whatever you have to do to get them to the poll. And I do want to remind you, I know I said a couple weeks ago in our last meeting that I was putting together something for the youth. Um, after I've contacted uh, several uh, persons in the community, it has grown. So um, I'm not just putting it off. I want it to be really nice. I've talked to the city manager, talked to Chief Ru, and uh, these young people have some very good ideas. So we're taking those into consideration. And I'd like to say thank you for everyone that's had some input and called me in regards to the uh, youth forum. Uh, let the youth speak. So it's going to be coming up real soon. We're just getting it together. So thank you very much and have a blessed day. Thank you. Next we have Councilman Williams. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to our speakers that came out to speak to tonight. Um, I would like to say that uh, Saginaw is a city that where we're pretty, uh, we're motivated and inspired when things kind of go awry. Um, so I would like to take this time to encourage our citizens to attend the front porch roll calls. I just came from one that was tonight over on Genesee, 3075 uh, West Genesee. Stopped over there for a moment. Um, there's others that are coming up. We have one coming up Wednesday, July 20th, and that's at 316 North Carolina Street. The 21st of July over 1410 North 12th Street. And then Tuesday, July 26th, uh, Can Council, 1311 North Michigan. And I'm encouraging people to get out because this is an opportunity for you to learn uh, what your police department is doing, um, the initiatives that are taking place, the efforts that are being put in um, by law enforcement, and how law enforcement in this community wants to work with our citizens. Uh, and it's a huge uh, time to learn and meet. Uh, stats, learning about new equipment, everything. Uh, so if you get an opportunity, please get out and go because again, we are a city that we're, we're inspired, we're motivated when things go awry. We have a lot to say, but it'd be nice if we have the things to say that are research-based, that are factual. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to get that information. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Next we have council person, Mitch. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I just I won't repeat too much of what my colleagues have said, but uh, thank you, Ms. Cuttington Heath, for being here and your impassioned plea that people get out and vote regardless of who they're voting for. Um, our local elections in particular are very, very important, if not, in my opinion, not just because I hold a local seat, but even more important. Um, chances are you'll never meet the president, but there's a good chance you can find your council member or your county commissioner somewhere you know, near, nearby. Um, so thank you, and I just wanted to add that um, absentee ballot applications are available. I know because mine is pinned to my fridge, and I got it from, from the city of Saginaw already. So make sure that if you're not able to vote on the day of, or you just want to make it easier on yourself, get your absentee um, ballot application in and vote that way. Um, Mr. Alexander, I know many of us share your frustration with, with blighted properties and the choices that people make to destroy other people's property or public property. Um, I know we had an individual on staff at one point, and I, I'm not sure what the status of that program is, but we did have a kind of a response team for, for uh, 
blight and whatnot, but it is a, an ongoing issue that we're well aware of and we appreciate you bringing it to our attention, especially if you have specific addresses. Um, so maybe after this meeting, if you could get one of the, with one of the staff members or myself or really anybody up here, um, the first step to getting it addressed is figuring out who owns it and we go from there basically. But there's a good chance if it's an empty house, it belongs to our land bank. And um, fortunately, our land bank manager has been really responsive to the council's issues and anything that our constituents bring us. Um, so if you have those, we can, we can try to work on getting those addressed and cleaned up in your neighborhood for you. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Mayor Pro Tem Balls. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Hey, I, I would like to mention uh, something about the uh, one week, one street that happened a couple of weeks ago. I had the opportunity to attend that event with some of the kids to go to, to, I, to, go to the school that I uh, work at, the uh, youth development. And we took four young men over there, and um, they was really amazed at the amount of work that was going on on that block. And not only that, they was more amazed to find out that 50 to 60 percent of the people that was there working did not even live in our community. And I had the opportunity to uh, talk to the uh, to one of the police officers there. One of the kids said he didn't like the police. He didn't like the police, and he had all these reasons. And had the opportunity to bring the police right up to him, and we talked. And we talked about 10, 15 minutes, and it kind of helped the situation out. You know, uh, <laughs> he was mad because the police was kicking his door in, or where he lived at as a kid, not realizing his uncle was uh, selling drugs and bringing the police to their house. So we had to let him understand that situation. So he, he felt a little lot better before he left. But one thing he said that kind of hurt me, he said that he, uh, if I hadn't have brought him here, there's no way in the world that he would be there helping somebody fix their house out. And it almost brought tears to my eyes to hear a young African male say something like that, considering the fact that 75 or 80% of the people working there was, uh, was white people that didn't even live in our community and they was there helping out our people. And this young black man said he would not even help out his community to even make it better. Um, so it was a learning situation. I had the opportunity to take him to Lansing a couple of days after that. And we got to talking about it. And he thanked me later for uh, straightening him out on that situation. Because if, if we don't clean up our own community, we can't expect somebody else to do that. So I'm encouraging everybody here to get involved in One Week, One Street, uh, other organizations like the, when the city did the citywide cleanup. You know, we can help our community a lot out just by us getting out there doing it. When people see us doing it, they want to come out and do it too. So um, I just want to encourage people to get involved in uh, that. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is the Bridge the Gap is having their annual golf outing, and they use that money to hire police in the tri-city areas where they take kids and put them in the academy. I mean, that's a beautiful thing for our citizens to do something like that. So if anybody supports the Bridge the Gap, I can tell you to do that by uh, getting involved in a golf outing. And uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, me. <laughs> um, my fellow council persons have already thanked our public speakers, but I'm going to do it. Okay? We're not just going to leave me out. I'd like to thank you all for coming and speaking. It is always good to hear what the community is thinking. I'm so glad that you came because most people talk at me, not to me. And they talk at all of us, but not to us. When you speak it out loud, we can do something. If you just in a corner steady whispering, we can't do anything. So I do thank you so much. As for the development, Kudos. Saginaw is poised for a comeback. Whether you guys want to believe that or not, we are poised. On last Wednesday, we started back with the prayer sessions that we've been doing, and we will be at Old Town Ministry on the 17th for those who want to participate from 7 to 8. And then on the 23rd at Bliss Park, Movement Church is having a festival from two to six if you're not busy come on out they've got food trucks all kinds of stuff going on i'm excited because tomorrow i get to golf for those who know me no comments from mayor pro tem uh those that know me i golf a little bit <laughs> but i did have a pro caddy who called me today two of them and they're excited and i told them to flip a coin 
whoever they pick, it's going to be better than what I got. <laughs> so I am going to be at the Ladies PG in Midland representing our city. Ooh. I'm going to say it again. Representing our city. Saginaw is on the map now. We are in all kinds of activities. The ladies, of my fellow mayors from Frankenmuth Bay City and Midland, they will also be golfing. But that, you know, they're good golfers. I'm not a good golfer, so I did get with a pro. So I don't have a pro on my team. So I, she'll pick up my handicap. I need you all to understand, it's a new season, it's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming our way. The spirit of power and prosperity. It's a new season and it's coming for us. I'm gonna continue to say this until I get in everybody's head and you'll be singing it. Saginaw is coming back. And with your help, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're, not, we're no longer saying we're imprisoned in our own city. We are doing things to make the city better. So young people, I give all of the citizens and the workers, hands off. Thank you so much. I'm real humble, Madam Clark. <laughs> we are now at reports from the city manager. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> At first item, I wanted to update council that uh, staff and I did meet with uh, Michigan Department of Treasury. We meet periodically with them for financial health checkup. And um, it was a really good discussion. And I will tell you that um, I think that we did make a good impression on them once again. We talked about the changes we recently made uh, with our Medicare Advantage program, which dramatically reduced our OPEB liability. And we've made moves to help stabilize our pension payment for the long term. Uh, they like those items. And they also, um, we gave them an update on our ARPA process with the committee, the uh, input that we've gone uh, to ends to get and they were uh, also uh, thought that, that we had taken a good approach with that as well. So um, I think it was a, we'll continue to communicate those things to the Treasury and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get, uh, we'll, that good impression will allow us to continue to get some grants. Um, I would encourage everyone to also talk to our state representatives because uh, some other cities got direct assistance for their pension programs budget. Um, we have made significant changes over the last 20 years to address our issues uh, from eliminating the pension program 20 years ago, I think it's been now, um, changing, uh, changing retiree health care, and that was in 2009, um, making a lot of changes to our retiree health care that our retirees have been uh, receptive to and, and agreed to make those changes and the Medicare Advantage plan. So I don't think if you are addressing your issues, you should be left out of, of uh, getting that type of help because in, we've been talking about this for a long time, uh, going back to Mayor Browning and I met with the state of Michigan, but our reduction in population has had a significant impact on our ability to fund our pension plans and other items. And to me, that I think that some of that uh, responsibility does go to the state of Michigan because a lot of the people who were in the city that helped create uh, those liabilities because of the services now they they live in Michigan but they don't live in the cities anymore and that's true for a lot of cities so uh, we'll continue to, to send that message uh, to Lansing and I think there is some funding in the budget that's additional funding for other communities um, to assist with that so I know the mayor's nodding so we'll be We'll be talking to people about that and, and uh, potentially seeing how we can get some assistance as well. Um, I was also invited to the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance. Uh, their leadership class had an infrastructure panel and um, thank them for the invitation for that. And uh, we did get a lot of good questions. Midland was there as well and Bay City, so it was, it was all three cities uh, in that region. Uh, did help. I think some of their perspective coming back to the city on how investments in infrastructure in the city helps with development as well. So I, I do thank uh, public services and our city engineers here today. Um, a lot of the work that they're doing on streets and upgrading the, the water system I think is, is good for future investment uh, from, from an economic development standpoint. 
Uh, we also talked at our last DDA meeting and prior to that, uh, we have a DDA, a Downtown Development Authority's uh, Special Event Committee, and um, we utilize funds in the DDA uh, to provide grant funding to organizations that have special events in the district. So Lawn Chair Film Festival, I believe, is one of them that received a grant and um, uh, positive results downtown usually applies in various events. Um, but one of the discussion points we had at both the full DDA and our committee was um, how do we continue to assure the success of those events and the continuation of those events long term. And Mayor Pro Tem and the Mayor and I have discussed that too because we notice a lot of times there are key central people for a number of the events and then if they move or they can no longer do it, sometimes we lose those events. So we had a really good discussion at the DDA about how can uh, potentially that be the organization if the events are in downtown or old town in the district. How can uh, we help uh, with continuity for those events? So hopefully we'll continue that discussion and we welcome input uh, from council members and, um, if you uh, are interested in assisting with that as well. And, and finally, um, this summer we are having a lot of retirements in the city of South, a lot of long serving employees that we have. Um, it seems like there's a, a notice for a, a retirement gathering or party every week. So I just want to take a second to, to thank all of our staff uh, working their final shifts this summer and some happy retirement and uh, best wishes for what they have in their future. And um, we did have a presentation this evening for um, grass mowing in the city. If some of you went to the NAG meeting, um, th that presentation was there. Unfortunately, our staff member who was going to give that presentation is ill tonight, so um, not taking any chances. I will postpone that to another meeting in the future, and that concludes the management update. Do we have any questions for the city manager? Mayor Moore, I do have a question for our manager. Yes. Um, just to get clarification, we will get probably some verbiage from you all regarding how we can communicate with our representative regarding those additional dollars. Yeah, yep, yep. If you want to uh, stop by or give me a call, I'll, I'll give you any information about that. Uh, <laughs> you need. No. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you about that, too, about those funds they help. And I was thinking, I said, well, how can they give one city, and it's, you know, tax dollars from the state of Michigan, how can they give it to one city and not give it to another? So I'm glad you did expound on that a little bit, but can you expound on the fact that they that they did give to one city and then give it to all? Well, they did give the one direct allocation in the budget, and um, it, it's interesting that we talked to Treasury, I think, the day before that was announced, and, and they didn't mention anything to us about that. Uh, but we did talk about our liability, uh, both pension and OPEB. Um, I don't know if that was in the works long term or not, but I think um, I did. Uh, I, I do need to dig into it a little bit more, but it it does look like they have additional funds in the budget, and I believe it's maybe 500 million, but to one community, 170. That is that is significant. But the legislation that was out there, the House did pass it, and it was. Um, to create a pool where uh, local units could apply and hopefully with the rest of that money um, they do that so that uh, some other communities can get relief to it and in Michigan um, I think if you look at the the funding levels for most urban core cities that have seen a lot of uh, decline in population you're gonna see the same same funding levels in fact I mean not even for a lot of urban core cities. We look at this problem statewide. Um, you can see some of the even smaller, more rural communities in Michigan have much lower fun funded pensions than the city of Saginaw does. So it's a, um, when you get down looking at some of these liabilities, you can't, you can't get to a point where all you're doing is paying for post-employment benefits and pensions and not providing services. So I think it is incumbent upon our uh, state leadership to, to look at the issue further and try to assist more communities with that, with those expenses. Um, as we see, people have, we see other communities outside of cities that have grown uh, surrounding cities and we also see 
population decline statewide. So you're looking at fewer and fewer people to pay those liability costs, and that's an issue. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Madam Clerk. Mayor, your next order of business is the consent agenda. The agenda has been available on City Hall and on the city webpage and on SGTV channel 191. I need a motion to approve the, the consent agenda, leaving room for exceptions. So moved. Support. It's been moved in support. Do we have any exceptions? Call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> Madam Clerk. Mayor, we are now at Boards Commission Committee reports. And we have one app Mayor appointment. Reports. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Does anybody have <laughs> any report that they'd like to give the board meetings? We are at appointment of board and commission members. Now I can talk. <laughs> We have one. I need a motion to approve. Moved. Support. It's been moved in support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? So that was number one or that was, we got two actually. That is number one. Number two, I'm just acknowledging it's a mayor reappointal for Lisa Coney to remain on Saginaw Housing Commission with the term expiring September the 30th. 2027 it is an announcement it does not have to be voted on mm -hmm. madam clerk well for the sake of the public the first appointment was a mayoral reappointment with council approval of john humphreys to the riverfront development commission with the term to expire april 1st of 2027 yeah, so that's what you approved that, yes. thank you ma'am thank you we are now at resolutions. We have uh, our first one is to establishment of an obsolete property rehabilitation certificate at 101 North Washington Avenue and 111 East Genesee Avenue. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Our second resolution is establishing a study committee to research the creation of the Rutke Homes Local Historic District. So I need a motion to adopt. So moved. Support. It's been moved in support. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Madam Clerk. Third resolution tonight is authorizing publication of the notice of intent to issue bonds. Need a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Okay. It's been moved in support. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. You are at miscellaneous business. Do we have anything that we need to cover? A reminder, Friday Night Live does start Friday. For those who would like to participate, the citizen enjoyed us last year being out and about talking to them, it'd be nice if we could do it again. It is at 5.30, 5.30. I have to ask her, because she's always there. 5.30 in Andy. <laughs> so, if we have no discussion, I need a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. So nobody move until we vote. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. We are dismissed. Thank you all so much for coming.